the um, the film I'm going to be analysing is the film called After School Special, um, directed by Jacob Chase. This film has a great build up and it, it flows quite well, uh, narrative makes perfect sense until the huge twist at the end that leaves the audience quite shocked. Um, personally, after watching it twice I was a bit like, okay, I picked up small, small details and this is what I'm about to explain. So the short film has a giant twist to it um, and upon reviewing it again the audience will pick up the director's intentions throughout. At the start we do hear diegetic sound, um, what is of children playing and laughing, um, suggesting that obviously the environment and the setting around is somewhere what, somewhat child, um, child friendly. So as we discover it's at a child, um, a children playing area and so it does suggest it's going to be in a playful setting. The sound fades in from the title sequence straight into the establishing scene. We have a pan and camera movement, what then appears to be a point of view shot, looking down with an out of focus effect on the female protagonist. Now that protagonist does um, is part of the plot twist, and as we discover, she um, we understand her responsibilities and obviously her as an individual and her the role she plays within this short film does cause a lot of shock and anguish for the audience towards her. Um, Upon the next shot, we established a point of view shot from the woman, looking up using a low angle shot. We then evidently see a child character, this establishes a mother-son connection. Now this, that shot did build the relationship as I just said, um, so we can either develop the fact that she's either very, very close in a relationship with that, um, with, with that child, or that she's generally the mother of the child, and so the relationship isn't certain, but we can only assume, and there's only um, a small variety um, of roles that she can play and the relationship she can have to the child, so it's quite restricted, and so it doesn't make sense until the film goes on. Upon the next shot, um, we can establish the setting as being a child play center as soon as we get the medium shot portraying our female protagonist So we obviously see her sitting down um, on the table and as we can see when she looks up at the sun um, it's, uh, the, uh, Or the sun the, the the child character He is playing in a like one of those little shoe things that you have in a play play center um, the character is then focused on and we have an over the shoulder shot, we establish this new character. So this we have this new character, um, a man that tries to make a conversation and we can't really develop who he is until he introduces himself in a very, um, I wouldn't say seducive manner, but he's interested in the woman, uh, we understand that. So um, we can see this man being a protagonist alongside the woman. The over the shoulder shot was both used to show the, the characters interacting. So we obviously have them engaging and that, ca that the camera work used for that was obviously the wide shot that obviously shows both them talking. Um, and so we're, the, well the film, the director's intention was to develop the relationship between the two um, as the film went along. For the time the characters are converging, we have cuts in between them portraying the conversation as being normal even though we haven't the, haven't developed the overall purpose of what the female protagonist is saying. So she's saying stuff like she see like I think she was suggesting that she was with someone and she was interested in the guy. And that foreshadows well, I wanna say foreshadows, but it once watching it to the end and rewatching it you'll understand the full extent of what she meant and it is quite a sickening fall. Um so the smaller details become much more bigger and noticeable once the film, once the audience have watched the short film once and the second time obviously you pick up on it. Dialogue is used to raise questions to the audience. We have her telling the male character she isn't the boy's mother, so we develop the idea of her being a childminder. So now the um, relationship to the child and the protagonist is much more clearer. We, she's evidently and directly said that she isn't the mother, and the relationship is of a trustworthy. It's a trustworthy relationship. Um, so we can either develop her as a childminder or a teacher, for example. Um, or just a general babysitter in other terms, a close friends of a family who is generally looking after the child. We then discover the female te character as being a teacher. So obviously she has she she is now prone. Um, we have now identified her as a 
a trustworthy figure. Um, and she te she is teaching, and the male character then finds her as teaching in her his um, daughter school. So she's a very recognisable figure. The, the male obviously the male character obviously recognises her, and this becomes a much more interesting relationship. Um, we then build the idea she's reasonable, um, she's responsible. So obviously she's also looking after the child and also her career as a teacher so she's got a lot of responsibility and trust on her um, as an individual and part of her career role. The director's intention is to establish a connection between the setting and the female character as well as the connection to the child so we understand that to the full extent once um, dialogue is used to describe what these people do. We have a very close up as well as medium shots we can tell along we can tell alongside the combination dialogue we can tell the relationship between the man and the woman character is awkward until the man identifies her as a teacher and then the conversation becomes much more open and it's not so much of a restricted conversation everything flows from there and we have props such as crayons and childlike objects are pla um, placed around the setting and so once again we can we can well it reinforces the fact that this isn't a child's setting um, so a playful area we can tell both characters are um, dressed middle class and so obviously get the director's attention as wanting us to depict both characters as being perfectly normal um, so once again we can we see both of these people as being general normal people we have we don't expect anything out of the blue we don't expect them being any any anything apart from normal we don't see them as being weird or anything like that so we can see the man has an interest that he wishes to escalate with the female character as well as dialogue again being used to back that point so constantly um, constantly just referring to them um, possibly going out for a date as he asks her and she refuses because she is seeing someone now seeing someone we don't have a clue who that is but once until we watch the film again um, the dirty well the disgusting thought comes to mind um, we then have a two shot depicting both characters towards the camera. We can identify the setting further as well as the emotions of one another's faces after this rejecting moment. So obviously the conversation then becomes dry and awkward. At this point we can establish the idea of the female being with someone else, so it depicts the male's attempts as failing her and her having no interest in him whatsoever. Once the man leaves, we're introduced to the boy character. Now this boy holds a significant value to the twist of the film. Um, he approaches the female character and we have close-up shots of both of them talking. The shots were, mo were much more closer to compared to when the man and woman attracted. This suggests a more um, cautious and intimate relationship, so obviously it's, it's a strong bond and like this, it is quite, it's, the camera work was intentionally used for that purpose. Now the director's intentions throughout was quite masterful in the fact that he was, it was quite a, once overlooking it again, it has significant impact on the way we view the two characters. Um, the boy could identify the man being interested in the woman, and so depict the relationship being obvious to the characters within the scene, and not just to the audience. So it reinforces the fact that the man wasn't just... We, we couldn't just identify the man as being interested, but even the child within the scene could identify it. The boy then becomes demanding, and so makes him seem much more spoiled. This comes as a shock, as we believe he would be polite and not demanding to his child minder. Now... It was quite respect a disrespectful approach, um, obviously wanting, um, well being demanding is quite disrespectful, especially to someone who isn't related to you, or stuff like that, it's just, it's out of the blue, like you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be demanding in any way full stop, so it makes it particularly very weird that this child is demanding and being very rude to this um, childminder as we view her. Um, we then had the female character not refusing any of his demands and so making makes the conversation appear easy, meaning she's not the type to say no. So she doesn't at stand up against the child being rude or whatever and she just goes on with it. Um, after this conversation the boy approaches again thanking her for a nice day out but uses explicit dialogue that describes their relationship and sends a huge shock to the audience. So once this, this became the twist um, to the film, we then have this child a close up of her, his hand on her hand, obviously showing the intimate relationship and suggesting that the woman is a pervert because he uses explicit dialogue um, and strong language, what makes it very creepy and not really, um, not really something you'd expect. And obviously, once you overlook it, 
everything um, everything starts to make sense. The director's intention becomes much more clearer, and in general, the whole the whole film becomes a much more disgusting, creepy um, short film. We then have both of the clo well, we then have a close-up shot of both car uh, characters holding hands on the table. We then have non-diegetic sound playing after. Child laughing with a distorted feelings to it, as if the director's attention to, to this was to remind her of her responsibility, and also make the whole scene a lot more creepy. Um, from there, we have then have the kid walk off, and the camera zooming out from a woman from the protagonist. It becomes a wide shot, and we then see various children playing in the background with parents and couples walking around past the camera. The intention was to let the idea of the whole abstract sink in, and make the shot much more intense, as well as making the idea of this relationship re repetitively wrong. Now. It uses it compares it makes a comparison of the the protagonist and the child's relationship to normal relationships, and it just shows the contrast as being genuinely disgusting. And um, the intention overall was quite powerful. It left a massive shock. It was quite one of those moments where it's like, what the hell? And in general, this this short film was very effective in doing that. The whole intention was clear once watching it again all the smaller details become much more bigger and much more purposeful and so I generally would rate this film a 5 out of 5 um, not just because of the entertainment side of it but just just general because of the the whole idea of it even though it's a sick, sickening um, short film the intentions were powerful the director clearly has great experience in what he wanted to do or she wanted to do and once again um, a very very powerful and sickening short film and this was the whole point throughout.